So four months after the U.S. urged Americans to reconsider visiting Jamaica due to crime, the U.S. Department of State has reissued the Level 3 travel advisory. Zooming in now to discuss this, opposition spokesperson on tourism, Senator Janice Allen. Welcome to Smile. Good to have you. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Thank you both for having me. Good morning to all your viewers. Good to see you. Boy, what, in your estimation, does this mean for us? It's a very general question, but anecdotally, when you see this being done again, what are your thoughts? Well, um, this matter is something, it's certainly a cause for concern. It's very hard to ignore. The reality is that, as you said, four months after issuing one, we have another on our doorsteps. And the frightening part about it is that I think for the first time that I am aware, we have seen some, I believe it is uh, seven parishes have been listed as uh, places to not venture into. And so advising particularly US travelers to not to venture into these places. I know over the years we have seen um, certain areas of flare up and this is not a new issue, but the extent to which this has become a real and pressing issue for Jamaicans and the industry is something certainly of concern. Um, what the impact will be, we don't know necessarily, but one can safely say that it will have some impact because travelers today have so much information at their fingertips so readily, so easily that they will come upon this information and it has the potential to have great impact on the industry. Um, so, so what I want to, as we said, four months ago it was issued, then it was pulled, now it's being reissued. Why would that have happened? Why, what would have happened for them to pull it and then now to reissue? Well, I'm, I would only be speculating what would have caused them to pull it, but one would have to assume that maybe some things were going in the direction to suggest that things were becoming under control or coming under control. And the fact that it is back suggests that things are out of control mm -hmm. and that to, to warn their travelers, their citizens to, from coming to Jamaica is an indication that they're not comfortable with how things are. Um, the reality is that we face it every day and I've said it before, and I will always maintain that if Jamaica is safe for Jamaicans, then we will not be having this conversation. If Jamaica is a place of ease and comfort for Jamaicans, we would not be having this conversation as to the potential impact on tourists. And so clearly there is a a lack of comfort on the part of the issuers of this advisory, the United States. Um, there's a lack of comfort in terms of what has been done, where things are, and their level of comfort with the, the rate of crime that is rampant. We all see it and we are experiencing it every day. So we're, we're, I'm going to look at the excerpts from the report. Um, this is the latest travel advisory updated Wednesday, October 5. U.S. citizens are being warned against traveling to Clarendon, Hanover, Kingston and St. Andrew, all of Montego Bay, St. Anne, St. Catherine, St. James, and Westmoreland due to crime. The U.S. especially warned its citizens only to go to Clarendon if they're transiting to other parishes and to stay on the highway. According to the U.S. State Department, violent crimes such as home invasions, armed robberies, sexual assaults, and homicides are common in Jamaica says sexual assaults occur frequently, including at all-inclusive resorts. And local police lack the resources to respond effectively to serious criminal incidents. Emergency services vary throughout the island, and response times may vary from U.S. standards. Goes on mm. to say the homicide rate reported by the government of Jamaica for several years has been among the highest in the Western Hemisphere, adding that the U.S. government personnel are prohibited from traveling to several areas here, from using public buses and from driving outside of prescribed areas of Kingston at night. This is not nice. This is, this, that, it sounds ominous. It's, it's a damning um, statement, or well, what you have just read. is certainly, it makes us all uncomfortable. That's a fact. And as a... Uh, a participant in the industry as a Jamaican, just generally, just to hear all of that response times not at a standard that is acceptable, lacking of re lacking resources. What this is saying is that 
we can't just PR our way out of it. We have to deal with the real issues and the fundamental issues that have caused us to be here. And this requires a joined up government approach. In some years past when this, there were, I mean, travel advisories are not new, but certainly the extent to this one is certainly new. And in previous years, when we have had flare ups in issues in the, in the country, in previous administrations, in the PNP administration, I recall vividly the minister at the time instead of just saying to going out and seeing travel advisors or um, tour operators and telling them all is well, Jamaica is safe, visitors to Jamaica are hardly ever affected. What he did was call to the table, the Minister of National Security, the Minister of Local Government, all of the relevant ministries to say, where can we as tourism provide the resources necessary to, to fix or help to alleviate the problem? Because no one in ministry is going to fix it. No one minister is going to fix it. And like I said before, this is a fundamental problem that requires us to really be frightened, yes, but frightened into action. And so it is my hope that rather than just, which I anticipate is happening right now, rather than just focus on increased advertising or um, increased public relation activities or inviting travel advisors to Jamaica for familiarization trips to show them that all is well, let us get together around the table and start to address the problems. And maybe tourism, in order to enhance the product, might start needing to invest in other areas. It has been done before, and maybe now is the time to do that, particularly in resourcing the JCF or other areas of security with, the, um, with support from the TEF to make these problems um, help to be reduced. My greatest concern, um, Senator, is along with the, the, the extent of the parish advisories, I can't recall, maybe it has in the past, that they are now saying that at the all-inclusive <coughs> resorts, mm -hmm. so now they are pinpointing that even where it is that you believe you are away from what is happening nationally, it is, it, it is happening in the resorts. I, I, I feel like the JHTA must be extremely concerned about something like this. I mean, we're out of time and we have to go, but I wanted to find out how do hoteliers respond in an instance like this? Because they must. Certainly, this is going to be of concern. This is of concern. And if I know the JHT, as I think I do, they are right now working to address this. They have always been quick to respond to these very serious issues. But the fact that it has now been pointed out as a, a bigger issue than it previously has been, I'm sure that coming to the table, all of them will be, they'll be working together with the police to make sure that this is addressed. Because like you said, we've always had the fallback position of having that safe space, but that safe space is now being breached. And therefore, it is priority, high priority. So this is not a, a simple matter. And certainly, the solution lies in coming together to make it happen. We have done it before with working together. For example, we've seen with the COVID response and how the JHT and all other entities can and have come together to help to resolve a problem. This is a similar crisis. This is no different than the pandemic. And I expect nothing less than the coming together at the table with everyone to try and find the solutions. Because tourism is our lifeline mm -hmm. and we must do everything. And if Jamaicans feel a part of it, they will work to protect it. So we have another layer of issues that we must address. But in the meantime, this is a priority that we must work together to resolve. All right, thank you so much, wow. Janice, for speaking with us this morning. Janice Seriously. Allen, opposition spokesperson on tourism. It is serious. Yeah. It is yeah. serious. Coming yeah. up after the break. Yeah, we learn about a mentorship program, a great one, helping to shape the lives of young women.